Okay, bipolar junction transistor. Notice I have here, I draw two transistors. One is called NPN transistor. And again, NPN, you have three junctions, negative, positive, negative. The way we draw the NPN, you have, this is actually the transistor right there. This end is the emitter. That's the collector. This is the base. The current going in is called the base current, I sub B, I sub E, and I sub C. The P and P transistor that stands for positive, negative, positive. Notice you have three junctions, positive, negative, positive. Instead of the current coming out of this and coming down, it's going backward. This current is going in, it's called the emitter current. This is actually coming out as the base current, and this is going up is the collector current. Now, if we look at the base current, if we try to watch and see what will happen. So let me draw the base current where it looks like. And if we have, for example, let's say a silicon transistor. So the current will almost have a value of zero. This is V. B E. I like to use lowercase for the voltages here. It really doesn't matter, but I like to use lowercase for them. When this value is roughly 0.7, you're going to see the current comes almost a zero, go into it. When it hits that number, it goes straight up in the air almost. So this is the base current. Vol uh, when you compare it to the voltage cross, so now VBE is the voltage between the base and the emitter. So that's VBE. When this value is roughly 0.7, for silicon the current will start to travel through this transistor. This voltage here is called VCE. C on the top, E on the bottom. And this voltage here is VCB, if you need them. The same thing right here, too. So for the current to flow through the base, you need a voltage of roughly 0.7 volts when you have a silicon transistor. Now, if you look at the collector current, it's a little bit different, the picture for that. And we'll do VCE here versus I sub C. You'll notice the value almost goes, let me draw a line here. I'll just do multiple lines. And let me draw a line that looks like this. And it goes straight up there for different values. It will look like this if you draw the current v versus VCE. And why do you have multiple? That's based on what I should be. Now, the one volt might be somewhere here. And this is probably most transistors have about 40 volts. If you go beyond the 40 volts, guess what? You're in the breakdown region. You're going to destroy that transistor. Now, why we have these lines? This is when I sub B, for example, is equal to 10 microamps. So we might have here I sub C equals 0.1 milliamp. This is when I sub B equals 20 microamps. And this will be 0.2 milliamps. This is when I sub B equals 30 microamps. This will be 0.3 milliamps, I sub C. This one when I sub B equals, you got the idea now, 
40 microamps and this will be 0.4 milliamps and this is when I sub B equals what 50 microamps and what's this voltage is going to be 0.5 yes point good job Sharon. 0.5 milliamp now these numbers here we put there when you look at that you can actually figure out a few things from these numbers from these graphs one when the transistor is on if it's silicon the voltage between the base and the emitter has to be at least 0.7 volts for the current to go through it there is a if you look back here if we do Kirchhoff current law if you remember Kirchhoff current law says all the currents entering a node should equal to zero so let's look at that picture and we'll come back to this in a second looking right here if this is your node here basically the current entering in the node which is I sub C plus I sub B has to equal to I sub E the emitter current The problem is I sub B is usually much, much smaller than I sub C. Much, much smaller. That means really I sub E is approximately equals to I sub C. If you take the ratio of I sub C to I sub B, that ratio is called alpha. And that's approximately 1. Usually that's somewhere around 0.999, some change here. But if you take the ratio of I sub C to I sub B, that ratio is equal to beta. And that number, usually large number, larger than like 25, 30, usually in the 300, 400, some of them. So if you look at this diagram, if we pick one of these lines, what's the ratio of I sub C to I sub B from this picture? So here, I know I sub C is equal to 0.1 milliamp. When what? When I sub B is equal to 10 microamp. Can we get beta here? Beta is the ratio of I sub C to I sub B. So for this transistor, the ratio is going to be what? 0.1 milliamp over 10 microamp if we do the math let's see what that number 0.1 milli uh, where's EE on this calc there somewhere there's a button here I'll make life easy 0 0.001 that's 1 milli divided by 10 micro point zero 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 ten and that's 100 so beta for this is 100, which means I sub C is actually 100 times larger than I sub B. That's what I sub C is. This actually called the current gain. Beta is called the current gain. So let's calculate some beta for some examples. Here's example one. A transistor has 
a I sub C, I just write I sub C equals what, 10 milliamp, and I sub B equals 40 microamps. What is the current gain? So what do we have here? Beta equals I sub C over I sub B, which is 10 milliamp over 40 microamps. So let's do the math. 10 milliamps, that's 0 0.010 divided by 40 micro, point zero 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 forty. Notice beta for this transistor is 250. Or, I'll give you another example. If the current gain is let's pick a number gain equals I don't know 175 I don't know why 175 and I sub B is equal to 0.1 milliamp what is I sub C. Can you tell me what the current gain? Remember, I sub C equals beta times I sub B. So 175 times 0.1 milliamp. And that will be 17.5 milliamp. That's what I sub C is going to be. Now there's three ways to connect a transistor when you build them. Uh, you could have common emitter, you can have you could have common base, you could you could have a common collector. I'm going to look at the common emitter connection. How do we connect them? common emitter connection. That means the emitter is used actually between the base and the collector. So if I was to graph that, it will look like this. This is my transistor here. And I'll put a resistor up there. So the collector, I have a source here attached. So this could be VCC, that's the common collector. This is the resistor, we'll call that R sub C. This is an NPN transistor that going this way. And you get a resistor here, that's the base, and a voltage source right there, VBE. And that's R sub B. So notice the collector or the emitter is used as a ground is that this one is attached to the emitter and also this end is attached to the emitter. That's called common emitter. Now a lot of times this circuit is drawn differently. People play with them. But let's put some numbers on it. 
let's say VBE here is 10 volts. Base to emitter is 10 volts. And let's put a resistor up here of, I don't know, one meg big resistor. Usually that resistor is really big here, much bigger than that one. One mega ohm. And there's my common emitter. Turns crooked. I don't know what happened here to my ruler there or my hand. And let's put a, these voltages don't have to be equal, by the way. They don't have to be the same number, but for this example, I'm going to use 10 volts for both. And we'll use a small resistor here, like, I don't know, 2K. And I want to find what is uh, the collector, well, I mean, what's the base current for this one? And can I find what the collector, can I find what the power is? Can I find VCE between them? I need to know what beta is. So let's get a value for beta. What do you want to use for this one? Anything in mind? Pick a number between 100 and 200. 156. 156. Can I find what the base current, what the collector current, and what's the voltage between the collector and the emitter? Yes. Correct. The answer is yes. By the way, this picture, don't be surprised if you see in some books, it takes me a while to draw these with the ruler, so I'm going to cheat here do them by hand. Don't be surprised if you see that problem looking like this. Attach this to ground. This is my ground, not a diode here. This is ground again. 2K. Ground. Don't be surprised to see it looking like this. Or, don't be surprised to see the circuit drawn like this. 10, 2K, ground, 1 meg, and attach that up here. This, this, and this are exactly the same circuit. They just look different. Now, when I started my lecture today, I said for the current actually to flow, to have a current I sub B, you need a voltage between B and E to be 0.7. And notice once that transistor is on, that line stays the same. That voltage doesn't change. So if it's silicon, you need 0.7 volts right here for that transistor to be on. The fact this is much larger than 0.7, that tells me, yes, this is going to be actually working. So let's calculate I sub B. Let me slide this one up a little bit. And let's put this one down here. So I sub B here is equal this voltage minus, well, this is ground here. So if this is zero, this is 0.7 volts, that's 10 volts, so it's 10 minus the voltage here, which is 0.7 ohms law, divided by the resistor, which is 1 meg. And that's what? 10 minus 0.7 is 9.3 over 1 million, which is 9.3 microamps. I sub C here is going to be beta times I sub B. Well, if you remember, Shannon told us beta is 156 and I sub B is what? 9.3 microamps. 
So I sub C is equal to what? 156 times 9.3 micro. So it's 1.451 roughly milliamp. Now while we add it, can we find what the voltage VCE between this end and that end? Can we find what that voltage? Again, if we look at that picture, let me just redraw that one so we get to see it. This is the one meg, and this is the 10 volts here. If we take a path this way, because that 10 meg here I drew there, if you don't like the way it's drawn there, go like this. And this voltage is what? VCE. Kirchhoff current law says sum of the voltage in a closed loop is zero. So if we travel this way, what are we going to have? Negative 10 plus 2K times I sub C, the current through that is I sub C, plus VCE is equal to zero. We know what I sub C is right there. So VCE is equal to 10 minus 2K times I sub C, which is 1.451 milliamp. And what's VCE? Ten minus two times 1.451. And it says 7.1 roughly volts. So the voltage between the collector and the emitter is roughly 7.1 volt. So you might be asking, how do you find what K is? I mean, uh, beta, not K. There's no K here. How do we find what beta is? Well, in the lab, if you were doing this, so how to find beta? So what do we do? Let's take this one for example. Let's say 470 ohm resistor here. Let's say we have 12 volts here. Transistor here. And I don't know, we'll pick let's say 5 volts here. And let's put 250 kilo ohm right there. Can we find what the value is. You think we can? Yep. So can I find I sub B first? I sub B, this is ground here, should equal 5 minus 0.7 divided by 250K. If that transistor is on, that's what I sub B is. So what's 5 minus 0.7, oh, I got an error on my calculator, 5 minus 0.7 divided by 2, oh, mm. parentheses, 5 minus 0.7, we know that's 4.3, divided by 250K, and that will be 
point zero one that's seventeen point two micro now what you're gonna do in the lab is you want to take your actual digital multimeter the DMM and attach it right there and that gives you the voltage cross VCE so measure this voltage if the DMM for example um, gave us a value of 4.2 volts I'm just using it as an example it could be any number if I have that can I find what I sub C is so I sub C is going to be what 12 minus the 4.2 I get from the DMM divided by 470 so let me do the math 12 minus 4.2 divided by what? 470. Oh, I forgot to put this in parentheses. 12 minus 4.2 divided by 470. And I'm getting here for I sub C to be roughly 16.5 milliamps can I find beta now for this transistor beta will be what I sub C over I sub B which is 16.5 milliamp over 17.2 microamp 16.5 divided by 17.2 it's actually 96 so beta for that one will be 96 now if you want to do some quick approximation there's two approximation we'll use the ideal approximation and we'll use the non-ideal or the second approximation so this video is almost done so let's do ideal approximation. What does that mean? Ideal approximation we make the assumption that VBE is equal to zero. Again, we use ideal approximation just to make a quick calculations. So basically what you have there is, this is what a transistor looks like, you have a diode which has a zero value. And the collector current I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B. So on the other end here, what you're going to have is a current source pushing down, pushing down of the value of beta times I sub B. So that's really what we use for first approximation. Now, if I take a circuit and I do calculation with that, Let's say I have this voltage here. I'm going to use first approximation, 15 volts. We have a resistor here of 470K. Let's put, I don't know, 4.2K here. And we'll do. 20 volts here again if we have a silicon transistor VBE here is actually 0.7 for silicon
and for germanium actually is going to equal 0.3 volts. So if I want to calculate I sub B using the first approximation or the ideal approximation, I sub B is going to be what? 15 minus 0 over 470K. Fifteen divided by four hundred and seventy K, and that's what thirty one point nine micro. And let's assume beta for this transistor is one hundred, just to make the math easy, then I sub C is gonna be a hundred times that, which is what? Uh, 3.19 milliamp. And if you want to find VCE now, it's going to be the 20 minus 4.2K times I sub C, which is 20 minus 4.2K. And what is I sub C here? 3.19 milliamp. Twenty minus four point two times three point one nine. If I push the right button, what am I getting here? Six point six volts. Again, if we did the math, can we find I sub E here? I sub E is equal to what? I sub C plus I sub B. We know I sub C, which is 3.19 milliamp. We know I sub B, 3.19 microamp. You add them, and you will have what? I can't find where the EE button on this here. It's probably right in front of me, I just can't see it. Where's the EE -E button here? EXP EE. -E. I got a different calculator there. Here's the big one. 3.1, oh, they turn it on. 3.19. This is EE. -E which is, I know somewhere here I have that EE -E button. I am absolutely blind. I can't find where that button here. So I'll just do them by hand. Zero, um, zero, three, one, nine. And you wanna add to that point zero, 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 zero three one nine three and nine is twelve that's a two that's a three that's a zero that's a zero notice what I sub E is very small so I sub E is going to be almost as big as I sub no, three point zero zero or actually thirty or three point two two milliamp compared to 3.19 so not much of a difference the last one the second approximation if we do the second approximation for the same problem for second approximation what we're going to do and that's the last minute of this video We make VBE equals 0.7 volts for silicon. And 0.3 volts for germanium. Now, in the previous example, I used zero for VBE. 
In this one, I'm going to use what? I'm going to use 0.7 volts for that. So let's do the math again, the same example. What did I use here? 15. We had 470K. Four point two K. I just use a dot for that. And this one is what? Twenty volts. So what's I should be here? It's fifteen minus if it's silicon point seven over four hundred and seventy K. 15 minus 0.7 equals divided by 470. That's 30.4 milliamps, uh, microamps. I sub C is e I sub C is equals to what? Beta times I sub B. And what's beta in this example? 100. So that's going to equal to 100 times that number, which is 3.04 milliamp. And what's VCE now? Is 20 minus 4.2K times 3.04 milliamp. Four point two times three point zero four. It's seven point. This number is actually twelve point seven six eight. This number is seven point two three two volts. Can we find I sub E? It's I sub C plus I sub B, which is again, I sub C 20, uh, I mean I sub C 30.4. Where's the EE -E button again? Oh, I see it. There we go. I see it now. Uh, I sub C 30.4. EE, negative 6, plus I sub B, which is what? 3.04, EE to negative 3. When you add them, what do we have? 0 0.00307, which is 3.07 milliamp. Notice really not much of a difference between if I use first approximation or second approximation. We're talking about a minor change in the value. So that's it for this video. We'll see you on the next video.